Welcome, everybody, to another episode of The Week in Wrestling. I am your host, Bloody Bill Box. This episode is being recorded, I don't know, maybe about 45 minutes after the conclusion of Survivor Series and the post-game press conference, so I figured it was a good time to come in and talk about it while I'm nice and fresh and uh, all the, 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 the events of the, the show are fresh in my mind. I took notes, but of course... We got to lead off the big story, the, 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 the huge story, if we will, coming out of the Survivor Series event is the return of CM Punk. I love it personally. I'm a CM Punk fan, so I'm happy to see him back on TV. Uh, I'm in that crowd that likes him. But I'm also loving all the backpedaling that's going on right now, right now, as we speak. All these social media journalists and all these little people who think they know everything about everything who spent the last so many weeks debunking every single rumor that came across the table. Oh, they're all eating shit now, and I love it. Every single one of them eating shit. They're eating shit because they should be. They're eating shit because they just... There was something about the tone this time around. Maybe it's how his AEW run played out. I don't know. I don't really care. The the tone was basically, we know better. Well, you didn't know better. In fact, I knew better. Now, I will admit that I didn't think this return was going to happen. And my reasoning was that I didn't think the WWE needed him. Well, whatever, far be it for me to stop them from piling on their business. That's up to them if they want to do that. Uh, But what I did say in response to every single one of these attempts to debunk the CM Punk returning to WWE story is I said, wouldn't you think story this big, a return this huge, Wouldn't you think they might keep that one close to the vest? Now, one of these happy little journalists that spent a bunch of time being like, nope, everybody I've talked to has said no. Has since already started their backtrack, and I'm not going to give any of them uh, uh, credence and mention their names and give them hits. Fuck that. But uh, one of them already putting their hands on their hips and saying that it all came together really fast and nobody even knew and that he just walked through the backstage area, plain sight, like they just cleared a path so he could get by. And uh, that he walked out and did the the shock return, which uh, in, a, in a first, I actually have the audio for it tracked. So let's uh, not going to actually play the. Uh, not going to actually play the. Uh, video so i don't want to get slapped that hard but uh we're we're gonna bring in the audio so let's uh let's do that real fast let's go ahead and hit play over here and take a listen i'll probably put up a fancy little graphic over this or something Now, YouTube probably got a fancy graphic, but Twitch gets to watch me have my head turned to the side. Chicago! Chicago! Yes! Yes! 
All right. There it was. The uh, audio, obviously, there was no commentary. They were uh, playing like they were going off the air. Uh, but you could hear the pop. Um, you could hear the audience. You could hear how happy everybody was. There was no booze. There's no jeers. People were cheering for him throughout the entire night. Um, CM Punk and back uh, uh, is back in WWE. Um, I I certainly hope that it's going to work out for everybody. I hope they do great business together. I hope they do great stories. I think as long as CM Punk finds himself in a situation where he is down to do cool things and be a major face, but maybe not the guy, I think he could have a real successful run in the WWE to wind out his career. I think the idea was to wind out his career in AEW. And that's obviously not going to happen. Now, maybe it looks like he's going to wind down his career in the WWE. Um, One thing that I noticed about his return to WWE versus his return to AEW was his energy. Now, he returned at the United Center. Bigger crowd. Not by a ton, because they really opened up the Allstate tonight. Uh, But bigger crowd, bigger venue, smaller promotion. Um, But there was a rabidness in CM Punk, like in his eyes. It was in his eyes. I noticed it even as I just had my head tilted uh, watching the return footage that WWE was so smart to put online, basically like, oh, you skipped Survivor Series, you missed what everybody said was going to happen, and a lot of people said it wasn't going to happen. Now, like I said, I'm a CM Punk fan, but I also got used to the fact that he wasn't around for like eight years, and then he was in AEW, he had some injuries, then he was gone. So I reconciled that he might be gone for good. Um, I'm happy to see him back. I think there's going to be some fun dynamics there. I know he has his detractors. Seth Rollins comes to mind. But I think, hey, it's been almost 10 years since he walked out of the WWE. He walked out in January 2014. Um, different land, Triple H said it in the press conference, different landscape, different people, different company, different outlook. Um, everything about the situation is different. So, Hey, I, I, I will be the optimist here. And I know, I know people are going to be pessimistic about it, but let's be honest. Do you really think the WWE will allow a sliver of what went down in AEW under their umbrella? (sighs) You, you, you'd be out of your mind to think that they would allow something like that to go down. So you can rest assured that there's going to be no bumpy ride here with CM Punk. If CM Punk walks out on the WWE or they fire him suddenly, it's going to be because people are running their mouth. And by people, I mean him. Um, I have no reason, and you might look at me funny because of how AEW went, uh, but I've got no reason to think that this won't be some sort of successful run. Now, we don't know what kind of contract he signed. At least I haven't seen it yet. We don't know if it's short-term, long-term, multi-year, single-year, through WrestleMania only. Um, We don't know any of those things yet. Certainly makes Monday Night Raw an interesting program to watch. 
I don't have live TV, uh, so I'll have to catch it the next day on Hulu uh, because I'm sure they'll include that in the edited version of Hulu. Um, So I'm not worried about how I'm going to keep up with the CM Punk saga, but, you know, now we've got, you know, think of the matches we could have here. We could have... uh, CM Punk versus Drew McIntyre, CM Punk versus uh, uh, Damian Priest, Finn Balor, J.D. McDonough, uh, Cody Rhodes, Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, uh, Jey Uso, Jimmy Uso, Solo, Roman. Uh, Did I say Cody? Because if not, I meant to say Cody. You know, lots and lots and lots of uh, programs for CM Punk to really uh, uh, sink his teeth into. So I I, I think it's going to go good. Um, but, you know, I will admit there is a chance, a small chance that it blows up and uh, everybody has egg on their face. You know, um, I think it was during the last episode of this, somebody in the Twitch chat said that CM Punk is like this era's ultimate warrior. I didn't really agree with that assessment, but if he blows this up, I think it's got some uh, uh, credibility to it, but we'll see. We'll see how it all plays out. Day one, Survivor Series for CM Punk. Back in the WWE once again. I got to say, if you're you're listening on uh, Spotify, you're not seeing this ambiance here, but I did my lights a little bit differently because my office is uh, all out of sorts right now. I was doing some uh, video work before I came into this uh, uh, live recording. Uh, so my monitor is twisted and I got a console and, you know, everything's kind of pushed this way. So you can't see it. And so my lights are different and I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, so much that I might consider doing it like this permanently. Uh, oh yeah. You can see, uh, in the background of my, my posters here, we put up Christmas lights today. If you're watching on YouTube anyway, or here live in the uh, the shadows, um, put up all the Christmas lights and uh, put the tree up, didn't decorate it. Uh, So uh, literally Christmas will get uh, basically a full month in our house because it's the 26th. It'll go uh, beyond that. So, you know, we'll take it out around New Year's. Uh, So good times. I like the lights. That's about it. It's about all I like about uh, Christmas is the lights. Um, yeah, getting back on CM Punk, um, you know, I, I, I'm sure people are going to bellyache, and that's fine. Uh, people can love them, and people can hate them. Uh, personally, I love them, and personally, I'm excited to see what happens. Uh, Royal Rumble is nine weeks from tonight, as Michael Cole pointed out multiple times during the pay-per-view. Uh, nine weeks from tonight as I record this. Uh, I love the Royal Rumble. And uh, it's going to be exciting. we got a lot of contenders now. You know, CM Punk. Randy Orton who came back. Now, I want to tackle something about Randy Orton coming back. I, I saw a sentiment from uh, one person. One person, but I'm sure others feel this way. Uh, cause I saw similar sentiments when they did this with Ronda Rousey debuting right after Oscar had won the first women's rumble, uh, case of stealing the spotlight. Um, I saw the sentiment from one person and I asked them, how do they figure I haven't gotten this answer? Uh, and I can gather what it is, but their sentiment was, um, Randy Orton's return was rendered useless because CM Punk came out at the end. And I said, how do you figure? Randy got his big entrance, huge pop, 
uh, got his shine in the match, hit his signatures, hit his finisher. Team got the win. They were celebrating. I mean, I didn't even go into this much detail. Um, they were teasing going off the air. What's the big deal with the shock return? I thought both returns were equal. Um, as Zane in the chat is pointing out, uh, Ryback was on social media this week. I don't know when, but maybe it was earlier uh, before Survivor Series. But uh, speaking of backtracking people, he's backtracking on something he said. He said that if CM Punk returned um, at Survivor Series, that uh, he would retire from pro wrestling. Well, uh, uh, Ryback's already backtracking on that, so should have figured. But, you know, I, I celebrated our wrestling rings always being safer because Ryback was never going to grace them again. But apparently he's a big old silly Shrek making out liar. Uh, and if you haven't seen that video of Ryback making out with Shrek, please, please don't. If you come across it and you see it, just skip to like 58 seconds or something, the hook of the whole deal. You you still have to see a little bit of the grossness. The whole The hook of the whole deal is like 58 seconds. I watched five seconds at the beginning. I was like, this is freaking what the hell is going on here? So, you know, we could see the, the video is like a minute 10. So I skipped to 58 seconds. So I saw a little bit more of him being weird with Shrek. And then some girl came in and. Uh, uh, I, I didn't understand the bit. I didn't understand the bit one bit. <laughs> I didn't understand the bit one bit. Excuse me. Uh, but all right, so Ryback isn't going to retire. That sucks. I was hoping he would because he kind of he kind of fucking sucks. Um, but let's talk about the rest of Survivor Series because, uh, to be honest, I, I kept up a little bit with wrestling news this week, but I, I knew Survivor Series was coming in uh, this week, and I kind of figured... I'd be able to fill a an episode with Survivor Series talk. So let's let's get into the event itself. I did keep some notes. Check me out here. Yeah, if you're on Spotify, you couldn't see those notes. Um, we opened up with the women's war games match. Um, team Bianca, Shotzi, Charlotte, Becky. We didn't give them a name. Uh, we could call them an all star team. Uh, minus Shotzi, she's not quite an all star, although her performance tonight certainly uh, made her a standout of the match. Uh, but they took on Damage Control, who all came out wearing Oscar masks, which was a pretty cool uh nod to the Empress of Tomorrow. Love me some Oscar. Um, I liked it first, Damage Control refusing to get tables every time they would go for weapons. People would be like, we want tables. We want tables. And uh, damage control was not having it. They they just were like, no, no way. I don't think so. Uh, eventually, Asuka got the table. Um, now, we've already talked about CM Punk uh, returning, so I'm going to include my, my notes throughout the night because I did... I kept notes about CM Punk throughout the night. So uh, uh, at this point, I wrote, uh, Chicago was hot. No sign of CM Punk. Uh, so, you know, the, the women's war game match was uh, 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 plunder and violence, just like you would expect. Uh, Io Shirai probably had the coolest spot out of everything they did. Um with the trash can jump off the top of the cage. Uh, in the end, Bailey took the L, which I thought was questionable. We we just established damage control as like this big super group. And Becky, Bianca, Charlotte, and Shotzi were just like thrown together. 
I could see them using this to further the uh, damage control story, but Bianca, all, or excuse me, Bailey, also took a number of bullets for her team during that match. So I, I, I don't know if it's all a part of the bigger story for um, damage control. I suppose it makes sense for them to lose here, especially we could tell a story around, um, you know, Bailey putting herself in the way uh, for her partners and then uh, but still losing. But they hold that against her. But they they forget that, um, you know, she took a number of bullets for them. Um, I guess that would be the the best way to put it, because um, otherwise our story coming out of this was, oh, Becky and Charlotte are friends again. Now, I remember the story that there was supposedly a real life falling out between them. And, and if they've made up and they can work better together, great. Uh, that's that's awesome. Uh, but I think people are a little tired of that always being a story. We don't need to go back to Becky and Charlotte. Uh, they've both done different things on their own. I think they had a weird moment during the press conference. Uh, they were talking about up and coming female stars. And um, Becky talked about Lyra Valkyra or Va Valkyrie. I, I don't know. Uh, she says she always butchers the name. So do I. Uh, Charlotte mentioned that she liked Tiffany until she worked with Becky. Now, Becky got this weird, like, on her face, and it was almost like one could take that comment as saying, like, yeah, she was a up-and-comer till you squashed her. Um, but I think it was more in character. Uh, kind of being like, oh, she was an up and comer, but you beat her. Um, I don't know. I think Tiffany Stratton is is more of a potential uh next star than uh, uh Lyra is. To be honest, I like Lyra, but I think um, uh, Tiffany Stratton is definitely uh, uh more of a star in the making compared to um, uh, Lyra. Just my opinion. I like them both, but if I had to uh, uh, take a pick on who's the star first, it's Tiffany Stratton. Uh, but yeah, the women's war game match was fun. A uh, great way to open the show, uh, despite the the outcome that I don't necessarily agree with. Uh, overall, it, 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 it was a good match. You know, great, great plunder cluster. Just all over the place, you know. It's not your traditional wrestling match, so if you're looking for for holds and uh, even in some cases stuff to make uh, old school sense, don't you know? Settle down. Um, it was a spectacle, and that's what war games in WWE is. I enjoyed it, uh, so that's my rating. I enjoyed it. Uh, let's see. We moved on to. Uh, 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 Teasing that Randy Orton wasn't there, which, of course, brought on CM Punk chance. And in my notes, I wrote, LOL, WWE. Because so I, you know, I had no doubt that Randy Orton was going to show up. Uh, they can tease it all they want. He was in the video packages and stuff. Randy Orton was showing up. But I like the teases. Uh, the, the first and maybe the biggest return of the night happened uh, at this point, though. Uh, right after the the no Orton tease was our truth returned, um, and he returned to uh, do hero's work and uh, uh, put over ruffles and uh, uh, bring peace between Pretty Deadly and Alpha Academy, and we got a, a, a ruffle shuffle from Tozawa. Whew. There was there was a lot going on there. Uh, but our uh, truth is back, so that's pretty cool. Uh, uh, love me some our truth, and they they said, "Hey, when did you get here?" And he says, "I've been here all along." Like, what are you even talking about? I've been here all along. Uh, 
Uh, love me a sip of water. Water is fantastic. Uh, I don't like putting water additives in, like the flavor packets. I used to, uh, like a lemonade uh, or those ones that have energy or caffeine built into them. Those are great. All right, let's move on. Uh, uh, Gunther against The Miz. Uh, no surprise there. Gunther retains. Uh, I never had any doubt uh, about Gunther winning. Uh, I love The Miz, another guy that I'm a big fan of. Uh, but I shouldn't say this because he won a WWE championship just like two years ago or three years ago. Uh, granted, it was transitional, but he did still win it. I don't I don't think the Miz is going to be a, a, a major championship contender uh, coming up uh, in his career. His career has been going for 20 freaking years. It's crazy to me to think that the Miz has been going in wrestling for 20 freaking years. Uh, almost. Almost 20 years. Um, great match between the two. Uh, definitely a very questionable low blow spot. Uh, I don't know why the Miz went low. Maybe I missed something because uh, I was, you know, finishing up putting the lights up for Christmas and uh, making a list of uh, uh, things and writing down notes. And so maybe I missed uh, something, but the Miz kicking Gunther low and then hitting his finisher was very weird. Uh, but otherwise, uh, as my note uh, uh, wrote down, or as I wrote down in my notes, um, good match, but the predictable ones lose me in advance because I knew Gunther was going to win. Like, come on, grow up. <laughs> grow up, people. Like, seriously, let's grow up. There was there was no way The Miz was walking out of here without his belt. Uh, speaking of people uh, who there was no chance of them losing, Rhea Ripley and Zoe Stark. Um, Zoe Stark's got a cool look. Uh, really fit, agile, seems to be good in the ring. But I don't get the big deal. Like, we just suddenly started pushing her as this big deal out of the gate. Like, she, even in her fit and thick stature, she seems to still pale in comparison next to uh, Rhea Ripley. Like, um, I liked both of their war paints that they, they wore to the ring. I thought that those are uh, pretty nice. Um, the match itself was uh, pretty hard hitting. Uh, you know, a lot of back and forth, but ultimately Rhea won. Um, like I said, no doubt there. But it does beg the question. Who eventually beats Rhea? She is dominant in a way that Gunther is dominant and Roman has been dominant. Who beats Rhea? Is it Jade? Is it Becky? Uh, you know, I don't think it's Charlotte. Maybe Bianca. She'd have to trade brands. I just wonder, um, you know, who it could be uh, in terms of who finally knocks her off the pedestal. You know what I'm saying? Like, who's the one that finally does it? Uh, but it wasn't Zoe Stark. It wasn't ever going to be Zoe Stark. Uh, you know. It is what it is. Uh, I almost feel like Zoe needs something else if she's going to be a baby. 
but she's hanging around with Shayna Baszler, who's a heel. So I, I'm, I'm very confused by the whole proceeding. Um, yeah, the, the <laughs> that's about it. Uh, very confused there. So let's see. Um, in my notes, I got uh, uh, still no CM Punk. Haven't even heard his name chanted recently. Uh, and then the Royal Rumble. Nine weeks from the night Survivor Series was recorded. Uh, eight weeks and six days. Now, as I record, after midnight, near 1 a.m. Um, so we move on to the Men's War Games match. Um, we tease the ever-living hell out of uh, Randy Orton not being there until the very end. And it was very apparent, like, oh. He didn't come out with the uh, the cage, so um, or he didn't come out to be in the cage. So that means he's gonna come out at the end. He's he's the last guy. Uh, you know, we built up suspense, um, and uh, ultimately he came out in the end and did all of his Randy Orton stuff, and uh, they had a cool moment with five vintage Randy Orton DDTs. Um, well, you know, his his uh, power slam is his, his vintage CDT, uh, RKOs, you know, all the whoa, all that motion out of Randy uh, for a guy that was out of the ring for 18 months. Holy moly. I mean, he was moving like it was 18 months ago uh, and they they revealed that. He had. Double fusion back surgery which is insane double fusion back surgery and he was moving like he just took this time off to take it off he wasn't moving like a guy that had surgery that his back fused gives me hope for the day when i gotta have my back fused or have my my uh discs worked on uh but in the end um Oh, I forgot to mention the the fun Money in the Bank teaser right before Randy Orton came out. Um, you know, we 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 do the timer. No Randy. Uh Rhea's music hits instead, and she comes running with a ref in the briefcase, and it looked like Priest was actually going to cash in during War Games, which would have been genius because they had just put Seth Rollins through a table. Perfect timing, but then, of course, Randy Orton's music hit. Um, it was not the remix version that uh, Rev Theory just put out recently. Uh, they they obviously were very excited about the return of Randy Orton, so they put out a remix version of Voices, which is a fun listen. Uh, you can listen to it on Spotify uh, through Rev Theory, not through the WWE. Uh, you know, same lyrics. Uh, pretty much the same sound, but you know, updated. Uh, I think at one point in time they called it the new metal mix. Uh, but very enjoyable. But <clears throat> the Money in the Bank tease was very well done. It it briefly distracts you and makes you wonder what's going on. Like, oh, are we delaying the fifth person coming out? Uh, because we're gonna do a Money in the Bank cash in. What happens here? Uh. Priest ultimately did not get to cash in, so he's still senior money in the bank. Um, and in the end, Randy Orton, what is it? Randy Orton, I know he caught J.D. McDonough jumping off the top of the cage with a RKO. I think he hit an RKO on somebody else in Judgment Day and then fed Damian Priest to Cody Rhodes for the victory. One, two, three. Uh, so, uh, both babyface teams went over in war games tonight, which is, that's a choice. It's definitely a choice. Um, it's a weird choice, but, uh, no, it's not, it's not really a weird choice. Um, 
but it is it is at the same time because the women's match had a team that was just thrown together and the men's match had a team that was just thrown together and their opposition were established stables and even if you say oh well damage control just added Asuka and Kyrie they were still established with EO and Bailey and I mean Dakota on the outside so that's a little I guess curious why we made that choice but whatever it is what it is I'm not here to question those things at the end of the day I enjoyed Survivor Series despite the matches uh the 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 uh, middle matches being kind of predictable uh like let's see yeah gunther retaining wasn't uh 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 wasn't unpredictable there we go is the word blanking because i just realized i skipped a match uh huh. uh ria and zoe wasn't predictable but uh, uh neither was escobar and dragon lee um so this match started off as escobar and carlito but apparently carlito is injured by escobar on smackdown so the match doesn't happen uh dragon lee comes to the rescue the match was canceled but dragon lee says no let me step in because Rey mysterio called him the future of lucha libre so this was the match um escobar just turned heel dragon lee just got called up uh carlito just returned uh so everybody needed a win here nobody really could afford a loss uh escobar got the win over dragon lee it was a great match uh definitely uh, go back and check it out Escobar is already thriving back as a heel again. Um, I think he's in a in a great position um, uh, to be a a a solid mid level heel uh, on SmackDown. And whenever Rey Mysterio comes back from his uh, uh, knee surgery, he's got a big time feud waiting for him uh, uh, to either get him over as a villain or. You know, it is what happens with some guys. They they don't perform. Uh, I don't think that's going to be the case with Santos Escobar. Uh, big fan. Big fan of his work. I think he's going to do great. Um, so it's funny. when I, the, the good match but predictable ones lose me in advance note. Uh, that was actually for the Escobar match. Um, I... Uh, didn't write that for Gunther versus Miz. I just wrote Gunther retains no surprise. So in my skipping ahead, that's why I was able to skip ahead. I kind of thought they were all the same notes. Um, a Gunther note that I didn't uh, uh, mention and this, I think plays into Gunther saying at the press conference that he respects the Miz a little bit. Now uh, Gunther actually looked a little gassed uh, after the match. And that might've just been great acting by Gunther. Um, or it might have been uh, legitimately, you know, tired. But uh, I think Gunther did a, a good job tonight at Survivor Series, making the Miz look good. The Miz made Gunther look great, also. But I think the Miz needed to look good as a wrestler in this match, and uh, everybody did their parts. Uh, that was that was a great match. Um, if I had to go for my my match of the night, I'm going to go with the men's war games match because it was just, you know, wild, crazy plunder. Um, you know, screw it. I'll, I'll rank them. Men's war game, women's war game. Actually, no, excuse me. Men's war game. No, you know, I'm sick of that. Men's war game, women's war game, Gunther versus Miz, uh, Escobar versus uh, Dragon Lee, and Rhea versus Zoe. Uh, just because Rhea versus Zoe gets my, you know, I guess, uh, low match of the night uh, simply because I wasn't really into it. I didn't really care about it. It, it wasn't something I was looking forward to. Um, I, I barely knew it was happening and that's partially because I don't have live TV, but all the same, um, you know, uh, 
uh, wasn't interested in it because to me on paper, it's heel versus heel. Baby versus baby is different. Heel versus heel. You, you get a tough time selling me on that one. You're really tough time selling me on that one. Um, but that's my, that's my rank them, uh, for the survivor series, uh, PLE. This was a PLE last week. We talked about AEW's full gear pay per view, but this was a WWE premium live event. There's differences between the two. There's differences, all right? We we got to keep them separate. We got to make sure. Um, but, hey, man, uh, no matter how you feel about it, CM Punk is back. Um, I, I don't think anybody feels badly about Randy Orton being back, but CM Punk is back. Randy Orton's back. Uh, I guess we can say we're on the road to the Royal Rumble officially. Um, I do wonder what the reaction is over in AEW to CM Punk returning to WWE. Uh, because I think they're still recovering from what happened. And based on the response he got in Chicago and, you know, I think wherever they're going to be Monday for Raw and future towns will be in, uh, indicative of what the WWE fan base thinks. Uh, but I'd be, I'd be curious to s know what AEW thought tonight after CM Punk got an electric response. And I bet he's going to keep getting those big responses. I don't think it's going to be, uh, uh, up one week down the next, like it was an AEW because of who he had backstage battles with. I think if he's a baby, he's going to get popped. And if they turn him heel, he's going to get booze. That's just going to be the way it's going to go with CM Punk. In my opinion, I think everything's going to go great. Um, I'm looking forward to all the fresh matchups. Um, and speaking of matchups, mashups, Joe mashups. I think he already correctly called it on Twitter uh, that CM Punk will probably be a WWE 2K24 pre-order bonus. Let me just tell you, I wrote before CM Punk actually came out of Survivor Series. I said, if CM Punk returns during Survivor Series, I wrote tonight, but if, if CM Punk returns during Survivor Series, I will do nothing differently. And I've already said that I'm not going to buy WWE 2K24 until it's dirt cheap because the 2K makers of the game, they don't like the community. They want to they want to uh, take the community for a ton of money. They want to lock things up in my faction instead of letting people actually play with what they earn. Um, they they actively go after the creators, the modders. They use, they abuse, and they don't listen. So CM Punk's probably going to be a pre-order bonus, more than likely. But I I won't get them until I can get that deluxe edition for like 30 bucks. 2K24 is definitely getting the 2K20 treatment with me. And I paid 30 bucks shipped. $30 shipped for a physical copy of WWE 2K20 on the PlayStation 4. Deluxe edition, all the DLC. After all the patches were done and they were they were done with the game, done supporting it, it was just, boom, here it is. Uh, that's what I'm going to do with WWE 2K24. And, uh, you know, that's all a part of I will do nothing different. Just like I said, if CM Punk returns during Survivor Series, I will do nothing different. Uh, yeah, I'm happy he's back. But if he had, if he didn't show up tonight, I would have I would have been fine. Uh, I didn't think the WWE needed them, but they think that he can add something to the 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 game. And uh, like I said uh, earlier in the show, far be it for me to. Uh, stand in the way of WWE stacking their deck. You talk about stacking the deck, AEW fans? Well, 
what's the move next? Uh, you know, WWE signed Jade. AEW signed Edge. AEW signed Ric Flair. WWE signed CM Punk. I wonder what AEW's next move will be. If they even have a next move, who knows? Uh, Wrestling is hot. You know, uh, AEW is doing some good stuff. They got that Continental Classic coming up. Uh, Triple Crown Champion. Uh, I don't really understand the G1 Climax, so uh, I understand that's basically how it's going to be. I know it's like round-robin matches and groups and points and doing math and stuff, Uh, but at the end of the day, somebody will be a triple crown champion, so that's pretty cool. Uh, Definitely some matches I'm looking forward to seeing there. And then, of course, uh, World's End, their next pay-per-view. I will be ordering, I'm sure, with my friends, uh, Samoa Joe, MJF. I'm telling you, Samoa Joe has got to come out on top in this one. He, he cannot have tossed down the Ring of Honor TV title to come up, em- come up empty-handed. That would just be atrocious. But... AEW does have a uh, a track record of uh, they do have a track record of uh, building people up and then just fizzling the fizzling them out. I hope they don't do that with Samoa Joe, but I wouldn't put it past them. It's AEW, but if somebody was going to end. Samoa Joe, or, uh, and MJF's reign. Samoa Joe is definitely a great dude for the uh, the occasion. He's been doing some of his best work uh, in AEW. Uh, you know, WWE was probably never going to medically clear him again. And then look at what he does in the ring once he got his medical clearance. Uh, clearly, he's okay. So, uh, world's end. I believe that's a, a Saturday pay-per-view, it's, uh, December 30th. Samoa Joe, MJF, it'll be a good one. And uh, we'll be watching it on pay-per-view. Yeah, all right. All right, well, uh, on, on that note, I think that the, but that, the blah, 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 I think that about covers things and wraps things up for the, the news and uh, notes of the wrestling week. I mean, how much bigger do we get than... CM Punk and Randy Orton returning. I'm I'm sure there was some other stories, but nothing really stood out, to be honest with you. It, it was a pretty, you know, tame and normal week. It was all about Survivor Series preparation for WWE. And uh, it was all about uh, starting the Continental Classic for AEW. So uh, good week all around in wrestling, I'd say. I'd say it was a good one. Well, let's go ahead and wrap things up here on the Week in Wrestling. The next episode of the Week in Wrestling will, will be recorded live on YouTube. It will not be recorded on Twitch. We noted before, all the wrestling content is moving over to YouTube. So the next episode will be recorded live on YouTube, and then it will be posted on YouTube and Spotify. But uh, this episode, recorded live on Twitch, will be available on YouTube and Spotify, Uh, but next Saturday, December 2nd, is when the next episode will be recorded, and uh, it'll be done on YouTube, but the next episode of the uh, podcast feed that you're in, Dropkicks and Joysticks, will be available this coming Wednesday, Um, and it will be uh, episode 22, Smackdown 2, Know Your Role, from the PlayStation 1, we'll be talking about that, and then of course, all the Challenge 64 uh, uh, Universe action, Primetime Wrestling on Monday at 9 p.m., Superstars of Wrestling Saturday at 8 a.m., and uh, Wrestling Challenge at 9 a.m. So you can have yourself a busy little morning over at YouTube. You could watch Superstars at 8 a.m. Eastern. You could watch Wrestling Challenge at 9 a.m. Eastern. And then you could come on back at 10 a.m. Eastern for the first wrestling live stream over on YouTube.com 
slash at Bloody Bill Vox. Great time, great plan. I like it. You grab a you you grab yourself some food, grab yourself a drink, and you know before you sit down, you probably hit the bathroom. Maybe you do that before you get your food and your drink, but you wash your hands. You wash your hands before you sit down, and then you enjoy all the action. That's just my suggestion. But uh, thank you for joining me on this episode of the Week in Wrestling. Uh, I will see you next Saturday over on YouTube and on Spotify. I have been your host, Bloody Bill Vox. And until next time, stay safe out there, stay happy out there, have fun out there, my friends. See you next time on the Week in Wrestling. <laughs>